Hello and welcome. Today we will be providing a brief introduction to financial derivatives. This video is intended only to provide a general picture of what derivatives are. The four most common types of derivatives will be examined in greater detail in standalone videos in the coming weeks. So what exactly is a financial derivative? Well, in its most general sense, a derivative is a contract whose value is based on something else. But more specifically, the term financial derivative refers to any security whose value is determined by or derived from the value of another asset. The asset from which a derivative gets its value is known as the underlying asset, or simply underlying. An underlying asset can take many forms, but it commonly refers to stocks, bonds, commodities, currencies, interest rates, and market indexes. The most important thing to take away from our discussion of derivatives so far is that their value depends upon the value of something else, the underlying asset. So, the change in the value of a derivative's underlying causes a change in the value of the derivative itself. This is all well and good, but what's the point of derivatives? Well, there are two main uses for derivatives. The first is to hedge risk. Derivative hedging generally refers to the practice of using derivatives for the objective of minimizing risk in the physical market. In order to demonstrate how a derivative can be used to hedge risk, consider the example of wheat producers and cereal manufacturers hedging their exposure to fluctuations in wheat prices. As we know, wheat is susceptible to significant fluctuations in price, owing to both supply and demand. A fall in the price of wheat is bad for wheat producers, because they can get less money for their crops, but is good for cereal manufacturers because they can get one of their key inputs at a discount. On the other hand, an increase in the price of wheat is good for wheat producers because they can get more money for their crops, but is bad for cereal manufacturers because it increases costs. So it is in the interest of wheat farmers that the price of wheat remains high, but it is in the interest of cereal manufacturers that the price of wheat remains low. Now, if a wheat producer expects that the price of wheat is about to fall, and a cereal manufacturer is of the opinion that the price of wheat is about to rise, the two parties can enter into a contract fixing the future price at which the wheat will be sold. For example, a wheat producer might agree to sell wheat to a manufacturer in six months at the current market price of $12, regardless of what the market price for wheat is in six months. By locking in the price of wheat, the producer is seeking to protect his or herself against an expected decrease in the price of wheat. On the other hand, the manufacturer is seeking to protect his or herself from an expected increase in the price of wheat. If the price of wheat falls, the cereal manufacturer or buyer will wish that they hadn't signed the contract, because they could be buying wheat for cheaper had they not signed it. Conversely, if the price of wheat rises, the producer or seller will wish that they hadn't signed the contract, because they could be selling wheat for more money had they not agreed to the contract's terms. Because the price of wheat can only move in two directions, up or down, this example is a zero-sum game, possessing both a distinct winner and a distinct loser. Basically, the interests of only the wheat producer or the cereal manufacturer can be met, not both. So, in this example, a Ford contract was used by both wheat sellers and wheat buyers in an effort to hedge price risk by locking in the price of wheat. We will discuss Ford contracts in greater detail in another video, but what is most important to take away from this example is that derivatives can be used to hedge risk. The second main use of derivatives is speculation. Derivative speculation is fundamentally different from derivative hedging. Where derivative hedgers are trying to reduce their risk exposure and usually are not motivated by profit in the derivative market itself, derivative speculators are motivated purely by profit seeking. Basically, hedgers seek to limit risk by using derivatives as insurance policies, while speculators are directly driven by the opportunity for profit. Now that we have a basic understanding of how derivatives are used, let's take a look at the different types. 
There are four main types of derivatives, forwards, futures, options, and swaps. Each of these concepts will be addressed in greater depth in future videos. Here our aim is only to provide a basic overview. With this in mind, let's begin with forward contracts. A forward is a customized contract between two parties to buy or sell an asset at a specified price at a specified future date. Forwards are not traded on a central exchange and as a result, they are not standardized or regulated, making them particularly useful for hedging. Futures contracts are fundamentally similar to forwards. However, unlike forwards, they are standardized and regulated so that they may be traded on a futures exchange. Futures are often used to speculate on commodities. An options contract is a contract that gives the right, but not the obligation, to buy, call, or sell, put, a security or other financial asset. Finally, a swap is fairly self-explanatory and refers to the exchange of one security for another based on different factors. So we have seen that derivatives are contracts whose value is based on something else. We have seen that they can be used for either hedging or speculating, and we have briefly touched on the four main types. This brings our overview of financial derivatives to a close, but please stay tuned for our videos on forwards, futures, options, and swaps. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to give us a call or visit our website.